October 2020. Not a great year for travelling due to the pandemic. But my wife and I needed to feed our wanderlust. So we decided to travel as far as we could go without leaving the country. From Shanghai, we travelled north to explore the border that separates Russia and China. Not exactly the Great Wall, but it turned out to be one of our best trips ever. Eight nights, six destinations, reindeers, horses, volcanoes, and a 240-foot doll. This is the story of our border tour. Hai La, Inner Mongolia, China. The starting point of our road trip. Together with our driver, Wei Zhai, we made our way towards Arshan, a picturesque town next to the National Forest Park. The park, with its solidified lava formations, lies on the foothills of a volcanic mountain range. Take a guess, how many layers of clothes I'm wearing now? During this time, the crater lakes freeze over and Mother Nature creates her art. Next morning, we headed towards the city of Manjoli, stopping every now and then to say hello to the locals. They didn't seem so friendly, judging by their long faces. Who would have thought? Emptiness can be so grand. Manjoli is a major land port between Russia and China. Security here is tight. The relationship between the two countries can be frosty. However, Manjoli likes to make their Russian neighbours feel at home with its architecture and dual language signs. The city's duty-free shopping is also an attraction, especially if you're in desperate need of a Russian doll. And if you prefer your dolls to be on the large side, the world's biggest Russian doll can be found here, at the Matryoshka Park. This giant doll is also a hotel, and no, there isn't another hotel inside this hotel. I'm about to enter a woman. And the last time we did that was uh, our wedding night. Let's go. Once inside, you can describe it as luxurious or garish. Whichever way you look at it, it's unique. This park has hundreds of country-themed Russian dolls each nation with one of its iconic compatriots badly painted onto it. Nearby is the Jalanoa Mammoth Park, home to one of the world's finest mammoth fossils. Unfortunately, the museum was closed, so we checked out their incredibly lifelike sculptures instead. A five-hour drive along the border brought us to our next stop. People visit Heishinto to ride across the grasslands on horseback. We arrived at nightfall, hungry and tired. A power cut had transformed our hotel into the hotel from the shiny. Spooky. 
The next morning, we woke up to a different Haitian toe. We went to the stables to assess the riding situation. Horses can tolerate temperatures up to minus 17 degrees Celsius. Shame we couldn't. We decided to give the riding a miss, but it didn't stop a couple of brave souls saddling up. Next stop, Moadaga. The drive along the border was remote. In some places, Russia was only a shot put thrown away. Being so close meant there was a threat to our phones. Our Chinese network providers suddenly switched to a Russian one. We turned them off immediately, as we didn't want the authorities to think we'd crossed the border. Not good, especially during a global pandemic. With one danger averted, we flirted with another. After an overnight stop, we headed towards our next destination. Gunghe is a forest city and is home to the Iwenki tribe and their cute reindeers. Although this one was somewhat grumpy, I don't think it liked being stalked. This is Lunji, officially the coldest village in China. Wow, so cool. Temperatures here can drop to minus 58. It's advised not to release any bodily fluids outside. I'm going to try and get out of the cold now by um, climbing into a freezer. Back in Gunghe, we spent our last night with our driver, Wei Jai, and we treated him to the local delicacy. The next morning, we got ready for the long drive back to Haila. Wei Jai recommended a couple of places to visit along the way. Our first stop was Urguna, the largest wetlands in Asia, a paradise for the local wildlife. Unfortunately, we only saw the stuffed ones in the park museum. And just when we thought we were done with the spectacular views, we were treated to this little gem. After 2,000 kilometers, our tour was finally coming to an end. In the beginning, we were quite skeptical about visiting the Chinese-Russian border. We even thought about cancelling. I'm glad we didn't. We'll be taking back fond memories from a magical land that's only a domestic flight away. <laughs>